CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play back video from your IP camera system using the NVR. So here you can see I'm on the four camera grid view. We only have four cameras connected to this particular system. In order to play back the recorded video from this NVR, I'm going to first right click. I'm going to click the playback button. It may ask you to log in. You can just use the graphical user password or the text password. Here that you can see that it automatically selected the first camera. Um, and here we can see there's a timeline. We just booted up this system when we got in the office. Uh, so there's only uh, maybe 30 minutes of footage here, 20 minutes of footage here. Um, but yesterday we did do a lot of recording on our system. So we're going to click the 8th on the calendar here. And of course you could double click or click on any of the days here. Um, as it shows on your grid screen. You also have the camera selection on the top left here. You can do the max camera button. It's going to bring up all of the camera channels on your system. And then you can see there's a timeline down here. This would let me select different grids. And for each different grid that I select, it'll pull up the timeline for that particular camera. See, this is, would be camera 5, so there's no recording there. This would be camera Four. There is some recording here, but later in the day compared to this camera. And then if I were to click here where there is camera for all of the cameras, it's going to bring all of them up at the same time. To close all of these streams, I could click the close all button here. Now let's say I just wanted to look from footage from camera one and camera three. So I would select camera one by checking this little check mark box here. And then I would check the check box for camera three. So again, before I did max camera, that brought up all of my cameras. I was able to see the different timelines by clicking on the grid, and then I click the close all button to close all of those streams. Now, to just get these two streams, I selected them by selecting the check boxes here, and again, you can see that there is the timeline here. Uh, this would be the first camera selected at the top. This would be the second camera I selected at the bottom. Clicking on either one of them is going to sync my view here, and then I can click the play button to pull video up from that specific point in time on my timeline. As you can see, it brings up both of my cameras here. There is a key at the bottom left hand side here. This is normal and event. Normal is your continuous 24 7 recording, and the event is usually your motion detection or alarm based recording. Since we're on a busy street and you can see these trees kind of flowing in the wind here, we are going to have a lot of motion happening. It's very rare that we don't have a vehicle crossing um, the path here on the video streams. And then we can stop the recording here by clicking the stop button. Um, I'm just going to bring up the first camera here and click the play button here and then we can go through some of these playback controls here. Here's a skip interval button. I can either go back 30 seconds or forward 30 seconds and I can also select different selections inside of here like 5 seconds, 15 seconds, a minute, 5 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or 1 hour. So let's keep it on the 30 seconds just for the sake of demonstration and I'm going to click the forward 30 second button and you'll see at the top that it was able to instantly go forward 30 seconds. I'm going to do it again to get to 42 minutes. We'll do it one more time just to kind of demonstrate that it took me another 30 seconds in the future on my timeline here. Again, you could select any of these different intervals and use these two buttons to rewind or fast forward in your video. Uh, you can also go in reverse here by clicking the reverse button. It's going to actually reverse the video as you're watching it. Since it takes a little more processing power to reverse through this, it usually does it a few frames at a time. Or then you can, of course, click the playback button to get the full playback speed moving forward. Here are the speed down and speed up controls. So right now we're just viewing one second at one time. If you speed it up, you'll start to view more seconds and it will skip some frames just to get through uh, that rapid playback. As you can see at two times, it doesn't skip very much at all. We get up to four times, it's going to skip a little bit because it's skipping through the seconds. It's doing about two seconds per second, uh, or about two and a half, three seconds actually. Then we can finally go up to eight times. It's going to skip quite a bit because it's just panning through this video. You can see that truck going in that parking lot. And last but not least, this NVR actually does a full 16 times playback increase, um, up to even possibly a 32, and even a 64, 128, 256, 
and that seems to be the maximum playback speed that this camera can do is 256 times. So we're just going to bring it back down to a solid one times playback here. Um, and then we could also fast forward by frame by frame. Here you can see slowly the leaves are rustling in the wind. This is really helpful if you have a perpetrator and they're coming towards your camera and you need to get just a little bit better capture before they walk by the camera or walk out of the camera's view. You can of course use this frame by frame selection here to get the best possible um, picture of that perpetrator. Down here at the bottom right you can select HD or SD. This is based on your recording settings that uh, we show in another video. If you set it to SD you will be getting the substream. Again this is a much lower resolution stream. It takes a much less storage space on your recorder, uh, but again we do cover those recording methods um, in another video or those encoding settings in another video. Um, but so we will go ahead and leave this back on the HD mode. Um, if you wanted to bring this camera into full screen, you would of course click the full screen button. Uh, you would double click or right click to get back out of that. So I could click full screen and make it full screen and then right click to get back out of the full screen view. But down here at the bottom left, this is how you can uh, create a clip and export it. Uh, we're going to show that in another video. Here you can see that there is also a hour kind of selection here. It's an hour slider, so I've selected a point on my video here around 3 o'clock. And then I can go ahead and use this slider to narrow this video uh, timeline down. So I went from 24 hour to 12 hour, gone down from 12 hour to 6 hour gone down from six hours to one hour which is about the amount of video I had recorded you go down to 30 minutes you go down to even 10 minutes and then you can see here there's a 10 minute span of video here and I could select freely between these a second way to pull up video over here on the left hand side is the video retrieval tab I'm just gonna go ahead and narrow out or expand my timeline here back to six hours and this video retrieval page is very good for if you, uh, your employees, your children, or your spouse knows a certain time when an event may have happened and, and you want to plug in, chug in a specific period of time. Uh, for example, we know we have some good footage between 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and set those parameters here. I'm just going to select the first channel uh, for the sake of having video there. I'm going to click the search button here at the top hand side you can search for motion, uh, alarm input, uh, video loss, uh, tag search, all of these kind of recording types. We'll just leave it on motion because we know we have good motion capture as you can see here uh, found in the orange or red color. So I'm just going to click the search button here. It's going to search for files from my NBR for that period of time and with that record type. As you can see from before when we searched using the playback tab we found that there is some event recording here and you can see that reflected in my file search on the left hand side. Now I can select also the start before and stop after time that's going to increase the file size that pulls up when I select one of these files. So I can do 60 and 60 and then select one of my files. It's going to take 60 seconds before this file and then stop after 60 seconds after this file. So it should give me around a two minute window frame of video. And then if I scroll in here I can see that it uh, actually did give me around I'd say 10 minutes of video um, but this is important to select the stop before, start before and stop after if you know you're going to need some leading footage and some footage after the event happened uh, just to export that video which we will cover in another video. Hopefully this video helped you understand the playback and how to get footage from your NVR system and from your IP cameras. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.